Hey, what's up you guys? Jamie here and today I've got an unboxing video. It's been like a crazy long time since I've had the opportunity to do any sort of a like legit unboxing video. Seems like whenever I get gear from Olympus lately, it's not in retail packaging because it's either like a pre-release version or it's uh, something where I've received it and I'm not here at home and I'm out abroad like at Olympus headquarters or something of that nature. And when I get product in those situations, I just tear the boxes open and put the gear together and just start using it right away. So to get this chance today was pretty exciting for me. It's been a while. It's not going to be the 45 millimeter f1.2 or the 17 millimeter f1.2 those are still not something that i've been able to get my hands on yet i'm working on it and i'm telling those guys that you guys really want to see those two lenses so that's coming definitely coming uh sooner than later but what i am going to show you today is well one of the newest cameras on the market it's the olympus omd em10 mark three <laughs> three three fingers there jamie uh, so yeah, uh, let's just get this unboxing going. And this is a little bit different for Olympus, by the way, as far as uh, this offering is concerned uh, on multiple levels. And we'll go over those as the video progresses. So I'll just stop showing you my face. I'll start showing you my hands and we'll unbox this camera. All right, guys, so I'm going to crack open the box here. And I just want to take a second or two to discuss or talk about you know my feelings about the em10 line in general and especially the em10 mark III. uh the interface has had like a big overhaul as far as you know the ease of use and my first impressions of this camera honestly are that i personally feel like this is probably the best first camera for someone to get and I'll back up that, it's a pretty bold statement I know, and I'll back that up uh, a little bit later on as we get going through uh, the interface of the camera and the ease of use and just how it works. And I think you'll understand why I say that this is probably the best first camera out there. And uh, you'll maybe even agree with me when it's all said and done once you see why I'm making that statement. So we'll just look at the box really quick. Um, you can see it's the M10 Mark III, it's in silver. That uh, comes with the 14 to 42 easy. Now this is pretty cool because I haven't seen Olympus do this yet. This is like a whole kit. This is again another reason why I think that this is the best first camera because it comes with everything you need right out of the gate. Uh, camera body, a great lens, it comes with a custom bag and they even throw in a 16 gig SD card. Who's doing that? I mean, you can sure you can go to Amazon and like build your own great, you know, camera kit with a bag and, and all the accessories, but this is straight from Olympus this way. And it's pretty cool to see something like this. Perfect stocking stuffer. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw the idea out there. So let's break it open and uh and get a, a feel for what she's got inside the box here. There we go usually don't try to take care of opening a box um, so right on the top of the packaging here they're suggesting that you maybe go take a peek at the OI share app and I suggest the same thing as well of course everybody knows it's for both iOS and Android that's great um, and they're also telling you to register your camera so that you can get tips and firmware updates and things like that so head on over to getolympus.com forward slash register Get your gear registered, folks. Um, top of the box, we got a little quick start guide here. And like a quick tip sheet, that's kind of cool. I haven't seen this before. So it looks like they go over um, just some of the some of the highlight features, you know, like um, you know how you can one touch focus and shoot, uh, silent shooting, star trails, uh, sequential shooting, uh, when to use your flash, kind of cool. You know, and it explains exactly how to do that. Again, further, kind of reinforcing you know my initial hunches that this was probably a great you know first camera for somebody throw those over on the floor this is the bag um first impressions i think i'm going to like the material that this is made out of this onto the bag there yeah i like this it's a really great finish 
I have my own bag sponsor, but I'm still gonna give Olympus mad props for including a bag, and it looks like actually a really nice bag at that. Um, just a little plastic, you know, deployant clasp here to open it up, shoulder strap, and let me get that bad boy opened further up here so we can take a peek inside. Yeah, good. You know, it's perfect size for the EM10 Mark III. Uh, probably with the 14 to 42 easy attached, certainly with the 14 to 42 easy attached and uh, room for another like longer lens, like 14 to 150 or 75 to 300 or something of that nature. Little zippered front enclosure here and we'll crank that open here and free tissue included with every bag. Um, cool. Little holders for SD cards. Don't forget your SD cards, folks. And you can definitely fit a couple of batteries in that spot as well. So that's nice. I like this. Pretty slick. All right. Uh, there we go. Free SD card. 16 gig sand disk. Uh, SDHC UHSI. Probably going to work. Let's see. 80 megabits per second. Um, you could shoot definitely full HD with it. Not sure about 4K. Again, I'm not like a specs nerd when it comes to read write speeds of cards, but I'm thinking that this might not necessarily be perfect for um, 4K, but definitely gonna shoot your 1080p 60 frame per second video with this. So everybody likes a free SD card. And we'll empty the box out. I'll show you the back of the box too. It's pretty cool. Just again, goes over some of the the features of the camera. Onto the floor. This probably looks familiar to anybody who's purchased an Olympus camera in the past couple of years. It's the the standard sleek black box that you get now. And I'm just manhandling the heck out of it here on my wobbly little table. And we'll crack open the packaging. Uh, let's see. This little one definitely 14 to 42 easy yes it is i love this lens it's such a freaking awesome lens super tiny versatile lens um what else we got here charger usb cable battery it's nothing surprising in here cord for your charger dig into the magic box camera strap and this little section over here, let me get the box off the table. This is the part everybody wants. I like making a mess. Actually, my wife doesn't like me making a mess, but hey. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I, I like the feel of that. So I'll just give you a little bit of a, a look at the top control interface here. Control dials are redesigned. Mode dial is redesigned. We've got function buttons and we've got this shortcut button. We'll go over the shortcut button um, before too long here because that is something new and something totally cool. Tilting screen. I'm digging. Let me grab an EM10 Mark II and we'll compare it. And I know I've got one sitting on the shelf. Nope, that's an EM10. Well, my wife's got the EM10 Mark II downstairs. So I guess the EM10 Mark II and the EM10 are very, very extremely close in design. Mostly I just wanna show off the differences in grip. The grip is definitely deeper on the EM10 Mark III. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is gonna be my, my little daily carry now, I think. Put the original EM10 back away. All right, so that was the unboxing. Anticlimactic, I know. Let me just get a, uh, a battery put in this thing and get the lens on it. And we'll just take this baby for a test spin and see what she can do. And then I'll also go over this new interface because the new interface I think is gonna be just a game changer for those who are just now getting into photography. You know, it's gonna offer them an, an easy way to do those kinds of shots that 
those of us who have been shooting for you know more than just a little while already know how to do you know when to set up for um you know how to set up for star trails or what kind of settings you need for sports things like that those are all accessible with that new interface so it's going to be pretty cool to talk about that so let me kill the camera here and we'll come back and start going over the interface and some of the new features all right you guys so let's just do a little bit of a walkthrough of this camera again i've only had it for really a very short time a couple of hours here and it's really only taken me just a couple of minutes to kind of get the feel for how this camera is different than the previous generations of the em10s and how uh this is definitely like the gateway drug into micro four thirds i think um for those who are looking for a first time camera purchase uh, especially for those considering maybe jumping into mirrorless or again like i said making their very first legitimate interchangeable lens camera purchase so we'll turn on the camera again this has got the 14 to 42 easy you know it's the uh, collapsible pancake style uh, mid-range zoom lens and you know so just for those who've never seen the lens before that's kind of how it works pretty slick collapses in upon itself um so once you start the camera up let me just uh flip it over here into auto mode so auto mode is just kind of what you would expect you know there's there's no tricks here but what's really really cool is when you switch over into a scene mode and this is what people are going to want to do who are new to cameras you know they're going to be working in a particular scene so once you flip to scene mode you get this new interface that pops up and it's broken down into categories you've got people on the top motion in the middle indoors is at the bottom and then to the right you've got nightscapes and then scenery and then close-ups so let's say we're going to be shooting indoors you double tap on that scene that you're in and then you have selections down here at the bottom so you've got one for warm shooting in like candlelight or when you want like warm colors represented and reproduced the next one is silent mode so if you're at a concert you know if your kids are doing in a play you don't want to be that jerk with the camera that's crazy loud um, with the mirror flapping around of course no mirror here and the next one is a portrait mode again for just you know being indoors and shooting people portrait style and then the next one is e-portrait which is it's olympus it has like an algorithm that runs that will kind of smooth out the skin it just and brightens the eyes up a little bit it's kind of cool um the next one is it simply says children <laughs> so if you have kids you understand what it's like to be trying to shoot children who are constantly in motion this will definitely make that easier you know it'll make your focusing a little bit simpler and it'll make sure that your shutter speed is fast enough to freeze those crazy kids running around and then the last one is backlight hdr so if you've ever been in a situation where you're shooting indoors and your subject is near a window or a door or you're in a dark room and they're in a light room and they're backlit uh with this mode it's basically gonna bring the shadow detail out so that every the the scene is more evenly composed or uh not composed sorry <laughs> so that the scene is more evenly exposed so that's pretty cool you know and then you would just again double tap it and now you would be in that mode and did you hear that multiple shots fired off at once compiles them in the camera and then you've got yourself an image where the background and foreground are a little bit more uh in relationship to one another as far as exposure is concerned pretty cool um you know and, and it's like that with all the other scene modes you know once you jump through them uh so like i said that was indoors and if you go to nightscapes i'll actually run through all of them for you if you're kind of curious let's start at the top though so we'll go over to people you touch it once it just highlights it. you double tap it kind of like on your computer opening an app right um so we're now we're on the people settings and the first one again is set up for portraits the second one is e-portrait you know you will see some repetition here just because um you know you're probably going to be shooting people indoors so why not put it in the indoor settings as well right so again the first one was portrait the second one was e-portrait the third one is portrait plus landscape so it's just going to help you shoot um you know people that are in the outdoors it's going to help bring in some vibrancy to the greens and blues to just uh, accentuate the fact that you are outdoors shooting a portrait the next one is portrait plus nightscape 
So what this is going to do, it'll use the pop-up flash to kind of uh, do a foreground fill on your subject. A um, little bit slower shutter speed with this one as well, you know, so that you can get the background exposed properly. So they do recommend that you have a tripod handy and in place when using this mode. Uh, and again, the last one is children. Uh, we hit menu to back out of there and go back to this main interface here again that shows all these different shooting modes. The next one down. Oop. Get out of there. Oi. Of course, I'm going to fumble through this and totally mess it up here. How about that, folks? Remember I told you I was going to figure out what the shortcut button was for? <laughs> this is what it's for. The shortcut button will bring you back to this screen. So bring the shortcut button back. The next one down was motion. So um, let me just start that part over again. All right, and then once you're done figuring out, you know, the, the scene that you want to use, if you need to get back to that menu that shows you all the different scene modes on the screen, that's what this button up here is for, the one that I pointed out earlier, the shortcut button. If you just tap that, that brings up that menu. So again, we already went through people. The next one down the list is motion. So we double tap, bring up motion, and it's just what it sounds like, you know, if you're shooting things in motion. So the first one is sport. And it, um, it says that it's designed to keep uh, to shoot things in fast motion here um, without blurring. So it's just going to be a fast shutter speed. Next one, of course, children, because they don't ever sit still. And then the next one is going to help you out with panning. So it's going to get you, you know, that really cool blurred background effect and uh, help keep your subject sharp and in focus. And, you know, that's going to be... It's cool to have this like as a mode in here to help you along the way so that it knows which axis to lock when you're doing panning shots. Um, we'll go back to that menu. We've already done indoors. And we go to nightscapes. And nightscapes is the first one just says nightscape and it says capture beautiful nightscapes at slower shutter speeds. Tripod recommended. Of course it is. Um, and then the next one. Again, portrait plus nightscape. We already went over that. Handheld starlight. It says reduces blur when shooting low light illuminated scenes. That'll be interesting to try. A fireworks mode. Um, again, they're recommending a tripod for this. It's just a slower shutter speed. And then light trail. So this is basically going to be like live composite here. So kind of help you out with doing light painting and star trails and things like that. Which is really cool because that's one of those things that people... Once they see an image, you know, like a Star Trail live composite or something where you've light painted with a uh, LED wand or something of that nature, people always ask, you know, well, how do you do that? How can I do that? And when you walk through the steps required to do live composite, even though they're not really that complicated, for somebody who's new to photography, they are a little bit complicated. So having a mode in here that just kind of handles that for them, super cool. Uh, Olympus is definitely onto something with this menu system here. And then the next one is scenery. And of course, the first one is for landscapes. And it's kind of like the landscape portrait mode. It's going to enhance the blues and the greens to just give you a really vivid landscape. Uh, the next one is sunset. I'll tell you what, on the cameras that have a sunset mode, I use it. I actually, I use it a quite a bit and I've got numerous photos that are some of my favorite sunset photos where while I was shooting raw plus JPEG, I was in sunset mode and the vast majority of the time, I just use the JPEG that came off of the camera because the, uh, the processing that's done in the camera for sunset images when you're in one of these scene modes is just top notch. The, the images are so great. So I'm, I'm kind of happy to see this and this camera, especially in a way that's so easy to get to for people. Um, the next one is for beach or snow. I mean, this is familiar if, if you've got, you know, numerous other versions of Olympus cameras. This is one of the popular scene modes. And then another one, backlight HDR. Same thing as the way that it functions for the portrait mode, the portrait backlight. Same concept, it's just gonna try to bring out shadow details. So if you're shooting outdoors 
and you've got like that crazy amount of dynamic range between shadow and highlight um, this might make it a little bit easier to get a usable shot that way uh, the last settings are for close-ups and this is pretty interesting to see this on this camera to be honest with you uh, the first one's macro and it obviously it says for close-up photography and it shows a picture of like a cupcake or some sort of dessert because foodies um, the next one says nature macro and I don't know exactly how this is going to differ per se. I mean, it does say that it is, um, that it is set up for, you know, like a more vivid macro shot. So more vivid than your, like your standard macro. So again, if you're shooting plants and flowers and insects, things where you've got like a lot of vibrant colors, it's going to help those pop and stand out more. And then we've got documents. So this is for shooting documents pretty simple i guess you know it's going to have a lot more contrast to it it's going to help you know your text stand out against the background of the document and the last one is a multi-focus shot so this takes pictures uh multiple pictures at once uh using different focus positions now i have not done this yet and i'll tell you what um I'm kind of curious to see if this is kind of like focus stacking and focus bracketing. So I'll give it a shot right here. So I'm going to be learning at the same time as you on this. And this is something cool too. I'm going to have to zoom in on the uh, the display here so you can see it. But you'll like the way that the focusing grid works on this camera. Well, okay, so it uses silent shutter and it fired through i could not even tell the number of frames that it did let me see here so it did one two three four five six seven eight nine eight it did eight frames so it just like it would be for focus stacking um i'll have to go in and review these images uh, maybe like on in lightroom to see if it produced a finished fully merged image and I'll tell you what let me see with again literally just broke this out of the box a few minutes ago for you guys have not even read any manuals I'm just trying to sort of treat this the way somebody who's excited and got their first camera would treat it just by opening it up and playing around and jumping through all the menus so yeah we'll figure out this uh this focus stacking mode here that it's got pretty stoked on that um it sure looked like it stacked them, but again, I'm not going to say matter-of-factly or not. Uh, let me reposition the camera here so I can show you the rear display as I'm getting focus on something. Uh, it's a pretty cool setup. All right, so here we are again. I just want to quickly show you the focus grid or display on the back of the camera. You'll see that multiple focus points come up as active on the screen when you're getting focus on something that's kind of cool you know that's not something that um that i've seen before on this model of camera this is something that i'm used to seeing on the omd em1 mark ii so uh this definitely bears a little further investigating and actually some use out in the wild maybe with uh with my kids running around because there's nothing more wild than having your kids run around right all right, let me get the camera back out a little bit and we'll continue on. All right, so we've kind of figured out, you know, basically what the scene modes work like. And again, I I can't say it um, more uh, frequent enough, I guess, that the scene mode and the interface that accompanies it, as far as accessibility is concerned, I think definitely puts this into that whole category of perfect first camera without a doubt in my mind so i'm gonna definitely be recommending this to actually quite a few people who have approached me talking about getting first camera for themselves or for their spouse or for their kid you know that might be going off to school uh, definitely a good camera for a first camera for sure Okay, so we're going to wrap up looking at the scene modes and we're going to move on to the next mode on the dial. And the next mode that definitely is worth talking about here is this one that says AP. Now, again, having not looked at the manual, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just make the assumption that AP is for like advanced programs. And the reason I say that is because when you flip over to AP, 
we now have this new menu or this new group of selections that we can make. And these are definitely all like more advanced modes in the camera. We've got live composite. Um, we've got live time. We've got multiple exposures. We've got HDR. We've got silent mode. We've got panorama. We've got, I passed it up here. We've got keystone compensation. We've got auto exposure bracketing and we've got focus bracketing. And now what's cool though is like all these modes have uh, settings within them that you can adjust. So, you know, we've got this focus bracketing and then we can scroll through and change the focus between shots. So whether it's going to be a tight focus or a wider focus group. Um, and let's go back and see if um, if the others have different settings and they do so you know we've got live comp there are no settings in there to be adjusted but on live time we can set live time to be one minutes two minutes or four minutes that's kind of cool um, get back out of here There we go. Um, multiple exposure, HDR. So there are different settings for HDR. We've got one where it's just going to convert multiple images into an HDR. And we've got HDR1 has a more natural feel. And HDR2 is a super high contrast. So this is going to be like the more artistic version of an HDR. It's exciting to see this because previously... The HDR mode and the cameras were just basic ones. You know, one was to bring up shadow detail and the other one was to um, correct for, you know, like a really bright scene. So really cool to be able to see these different modes in there. Uh, again, we've got silent mode, panorama, keystone compensation, and then auto exposure bracketing. And this is where we've got our different choices. We've got um, three images at one EV each. Or we've got five images at 0.7 EV each. So if you're going to be doing your own HDRs, not having the camera take care of it, here's quick access to get to your auto exposure bracketing. So this is super cool because I think that once somebody kind of gets familiar with the camera and they're used to you know, shooting with it and they've already explored all the scene modes and they're really comfortable with that and then they start wanting to develop their creativity more and use more advanced functions... They're easily accessible without having to get into a menu system to do so. And there are great explanations that they're like little pop-ups that show up, you know, for each one to let them know this is what this mode does and this is how you get into it, you know, just this way. Pretty exciting stuff. So this has just been kind of a basic quick rundown of the EM10 Mark III. I plan on getting out and shooting with it over the next couple of days, and I'll be sharing some images, of course, on you know all of my social accounts, so Facebook, uh, Twitter, Flickr, Instagram, they'll be everywhere. So just kind of keep an eye out for that, and if you have any questions about this camera, just feel free to get a hold of me. I'm super fast to respond, and I, like I said, I'm going to go out on a limb here without even going out and shooting with it yet. I'm going to tell you. This is the camera that you're going to want to get somebody as a gift who is looking to get into photography, bar none. Like I said, gateway drug into micro four thirds. You know, this camera will grow with somebody from their being their very first camera all the way into the advanced functions. It's all right here. And what's cool with this again was it's an entire kit. You know, it is camera, great compact lens camera bag and they even give you an sd card to use with the kit i mean how cool is that so i'm gonna wrap this video up and i'm gonna retire for the night because it's getting a little late for me and tomorrow i'm taking off and i'm going and shooting with this camera and stay tuned for the results from it you guys take care and i'll see you